Good evening. All right, I have to put my eyes on so I could see everyone. <gasps> you look so beautiful, everybody. <laughs> oh, well, we are glad you're here. My name is Samantha. Welcome to a little bit of Heaven Ministries. And I see some new faces. So if you're visiting for the first time, would you raise your hand so we could just acknowledge you? Welcome. Keep your hands up. We have a gift for you. And Annie's going to come through right here. Maureen's visiting for the first time. Maureen over here. And that gentleman. And I do have to just mention, um, if, if for any reason you have parked in front of the animal hospital, we actually have the entire parking lot except right in front of the animal hospital, which is the brick building next door. It's a 24-hour hospital. It does need to always be vacant at any point for their animal emergency. So if anyone's parked there, this would be a great time to move your car. Uh, I want to thank Phyllis coming in early to get that coffee ready. Because you do not want to taste my coffee. My mother used to walk in here, see me behind the counter, and had the look of fear on her face. Like, Anyway, for those of you visiting for the first time, I always quickly try to share the story behind Little Bit of Heaven Ministries. Doing that actually for two reasons. A lot of times people come in, they're not quite sure what we are. And of course, every time you come in, for those of you who are regulars, it's always looking different, right? We, we should have these tables on wheels or something. We just keep switching it around. But for Kathy Gallagher, we definitely need a lot of room in the front. So uh, we kind of switch it around for you. But Little Bit of Heaven is actually a full-time ministry. We're a non-for-profit, all-volunteer run. Every single one of us here is a volunteer. We all do this as a labor of love. But it actually came from a vision that I had well over 21 years ago. And I was home one night. I was watching the news. And unfortunately, that night told the story of a young girl who was kidnapped on Long Island. Now, she has since come forward. I usually would very rarely say her name out of respect for her, but her name is Katie Beers. And I can say that because she's now quite victorious. I mean, far beyond what I would have uh, ever imagined. And so I'm excited for her and what, how God is working in her life. But from watching that show, I literally, on the news, I was so overwhelmed with the evil of the world that I literally just cried out to God. And I just said, what's wrong with this world? And Can't there just be a place for good people? And I actually heard two words very clearly, and those words were, that's heaven. So I responded back and said, well, can't there be just a little bit of heaven on earth? So that is where our name came from. And for the next two years, I began to write out my vision. You know, if there was a little bit of heaven on earth, what would it be like? And I started to imagine a haven and a refuge and an oasis away from our stuff, because we all have stuff. And if we don't have stuff, we have issues. <laughs> and if you don't have stuff or issues, consider yourself blessed. <laughs> So I said, you know, if there was a place like this, I would want it to be open to all ages so no one would be home alone. And we have little Lila Grace who's here tonight. She's six months. Woo! Woo and she is a believer. So uh, <laughs> as you can see, her hands right now are in the praying position. She's ready. She's ready for tonight. And Lila Grace is actually not even our youngest guest. Our youngest guest was in the womb. Our oldest guest was 110. And I was telling Maureen before, we keep her picture up in the Heavens Hall of Fame as evidence so you know that we're speaking truth. I also wanted this place to be for all backgrounds. And that's why there's a cross behind me with a Jewish star. I wanted us to begin to celebrate our differences and stop being so divided by them. So as my vision continued, I said there would need to be music because music is so healing. But I knew I wanted all different styles of music because there's all different styles of us, right? We all like something different. So I said, what if we had a blues night and a jazz night and a gospel night and Israeli night and a motel night and a Latin night so that no matter what evening you came, there might be something specifically you would enjoy. Then I started to think about classes and workshops, seminars, support groups that would teach us how to live a more victorious life. And then I started to think about chocolate. <laughs> it's a fine line between issues and chocolate, I'm just saying. So I knew I wanted to keep it simple. So I said, why don't we just do coffee and we'll get some really great desserts that I did not bake and we'll get them from a local bakery so they get, a, they get blessed by the business and at the same time we get some really awesome desserts that we normally wouldn't have. So anyway, I've written all this down and I saw everything so clearly. You know, when God gives you a vision, right, Jules? You could see detail. So I saw the colors, I saw what would be on the walls and I saw everything in the vision except 
for you. And I didn't understand why would you give me this whole vision, but nobody's coming. <laughs> now, he showed me that later on, but at the time I didn't understand, oh, well, the seats are empty, Lord, so why would that be? So anyway, I wrote all the vision down, I sketched it, and finally I sat down with a friend of mine that I call my life speaker. And you want to make sure you surround yourself with life speakers. Those are the people that when you go and you tell them something, instead of telling you all the reasons why it won't work, they'll tell you all the reasons why it can. Jules is a life speaker. Woohoo! Hopefully I'm yours as well. So, um, so anyway, I show her the whole vision, and she goes, oh, Samantha, this is such a great idea. When are you going to do it? I'm like, well, I'm not going to do it. Just what do you mean? I said, oh, I can't do this. She goes, why? I said, well, let's see. Let's start with I have no money. I certainly have no clue. And I can't make coffee. So I did not see me. I really thought I was the idea person. And I was going to meet the person who had money, knowledge, and the ability behind the kitchen and give it to them. And then ask if I could volunteer for them. But this girl didn't see it that way. And she just looked at me. She goes, you know, this sounds like God to me. Because when you can't, he can. So she said, Samantha, I'm going to challenge you. I want you to get together with people that are strong in their prayer walk. Bring this list with you and pray over this list. And if it's the Lord's will, you know what? He'll do it in spite of you. So that's what we did. We got together with six people. We prayed over this list. Within weeks, every single item on that list was provided for supernaturally. No one ever gave me money. We literally found the items, whether they were in dumpsters or garage sales on a Sunday and you name it, the most obscure places. And we ended up opening on April 8th, 1994. We'll be going into our 21st year. Woohoo! That is amazing. And I share that because if you have a dream or a vision that you're sitting on, get off that tuchus. All right? That's the Jewish word for tush. And seek him. I would have missed all this if nobody went into agreement and spoke life. And it would have been somebody else. Because, you know, we're irreplaceable. He's looking for the yes. He's looking for the person who will say yes. Let him do what we can't do. And that's why I always share the story in the beginning. So anyway, since the day we opened, well over 100,000 guests have been through our doors from all over the world. We just had a band here about two weeks ago from Russia. We've had people visit from Sweden, Norway, Scotland, Estonia, Latvia. Um, quite amazing. East North Port, not so much. They're still trying to figure out what we are. What is that place? And they keep driving by. And they keep driving by. So I figured as soon as we move to another town, then they'll start coming. So anyway, but we're so glad you're here tonight. Uh, Kathy Gallagher will be here going into her sixth year at Little Bit of Heaven. She has an amazing, amazing ministry. How many people have seen Kathy before? So we know why you're back. Okay, let me go the other way. How many people have never been to the Kathy Gallagher evening? Okay, so, you know, seat belts are required. <laughs> I always have to put out a disclaimer before I bring her up here. Because what you see is this really, like, cute, like, adorable little person in a package. But you know what she really is? I don't know if you've ever... This is one of my favorite posters. Do you ever see the poster where it's a kitten looking in the mirror, but the reflection back is a lion that's roaring. <laughs> that's her. Because <laughs> she comes up and she's like, oh, so glad you're here. And she's just like me. She's all excited. She's so happy that you're here. And she's so, you know, thrilled. And then she gets down to business. So I'm just saying, I'm telling you, supernatural things happen, including to her herself, for those of you who were here a month ago, right here on this altar, the Lord healed her. And we all were witnesses. So, and it's on video. So you can check that out and watch it because not only was she screaming, it's over all of us because she came in here in agonizing pain, was c just determined to press. And she really even said, you know, I'm going to sit on a chair if you don't mind. I really can't walk around. And by the end of the evening, she's jumping. I thought she was going to hit the ceiling tile. So, so it was wonderful. Anyway, I'd love us to take a moment out. Let's pray. Let's uh, welcome the Holy Spirit. We're going to get this evening started. So, Father, we just thank you so much, Lord, for who you are. We thank you for your presence in this building. We thank you, Lord, that you raised this ministry up out of nothing, Lord, so that all of us would have a home away from home, so that all of us would have a place that we can seek you because you 
say that you reward those who diligently seek you. So bless each one that's come out tonight, driven maybe from far away, someone who might have just felt they were too cold, whatever it is, Father, they've come here tonight, not seeking Kathy, but seeking you. And Father, we thank you for Kathy's yes, that you use her in a mighty way to bring heaven to earth. So, Father, bless each one tonight. Bless our time of worship, our teaching, and, of course, our fellowship. And may you be glorified in everything that's done here tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, we always start out with worship. You know, the Lord says we enter his gates through praise and thanksgiving. And, wow, if you've never seen Tanya before, let me tell you. I'm telling you, she can break yolks. <laughs> and I'm not talking about eggs. I'm talking, if you're in any kind of bondage, because you know why? She's a worshiper. She's not coming here to entertain us. She's a worshiper. Would you please welcome Tanya Nemley? Good evening, everyone. You guys are brave. <laughs> I tell my husband, I said, nobody's going to be there. Nobody's going to come out in that cold. But you know what? Y'all came out for Jesus. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. You came out for Jesus. And you're a winner. And you're victorious. Amen. Giving honor to God tonight, to our speaker, Kathy and her team, to Samantha, and to all of you here this evening, I just wish you a happy love in the Lord tonight. Uh, when Kathy told me what, her, what she was going to be speaking about ministering, I know that it's just for you. So I'm praying that my songs will touch your heart because I sing them to you from my heart. Praise you, Lord. What a friend we have in Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah.
our troubles. Hallelujah. I want to just tell you a little teeny story. One day I was living in Bayshore. I, I was from the Massapequa, Amityville area, and my husband and I moved to Bayshore for a couple of years. And my car broke down, and I didn't really know anybody around there, and I was stuck in the house every day. My husband went to work, and I was so lonely. I was just, have you ever been in a place where you're just so lonely? And I called, who else do you call? You call your mom. Got on the phone, called my mom. She's in heaven with the Lord now, but I called my mom and I said, Mom, I'm just so lonely. I'm just lonely. And she said, Tanya, I know you're a woman of God. I know you know God's word and how to pray. She said, but what a friend we have in Jesus. And, you know, ever since then, I think I can hear my mother's words in my ear. Sometimes you got to speak things into people. And I remember that, and it touched my heart. And every time I think I'm going to feel lonely, I hear my mother's voice. But my second song is a song that really touches me a lot because it just tells you not to be afraid, not to be afraid of the things in life. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Give me a little more sound on the mic. Hallelujah. Just remember, Jesus is all you never have to be afraid. When you walk through a storm,
your life. You will never be alone. So be brave. Be strong. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Just open your hearts up tonight. God wants to minister to you tonight. Oh, hallelujah. Don't be afraid of the spirit. Just call the Lord into, into your life tonight and allow the servant of God to minister to your soul from the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you.